What the frick was that? If there was ever a game to describe the entire Chargers season, it is this freaking game, man. Justin Herbert played amazing, and the offense didn't give him any help, and the defense was just playing way too far back. Can you guys even hear me from this far back? They were playing 10 yards off on every single freaking play, man. Jordan Love looked like he was better than Justin Herbert stat-wise in this game, which is absurd. But let's get into this offense, man. Oh my gosh. Make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy this content. I don't enjoy making it because the Chargers give, give me so much freaking stress, bro. Okay, anyways, this offense, man. Justin Herbert was hitting guys all freaking day, but they were just dropping balls. He hit Keenan Allen over the middle and then on fourth down hit Donald Parham wide open and they both just dropped the ball in the first quarter. Donald Parham caught the first down conversion on that same exact route the next drive, ended up having a pretty good game, honestly. And Keenan, man, he was cooking dudes with his route running like usual and still had over 100 yards, but... He did have three drops today, and one of those was a crucial third down in the red zone that would have given us the ball at the one-yard line, and then another was a wide-open touchdown over the middle on the first drive of the second half, man. He gets a pass from me, though, because he is still injured, but also because his route running was still great, which is the reason that he was open a lot of the time, and also he was the lead receiver, man. Stone Smart had an awesome 51-yard touchdown on a deep corner, which I told you guys in my last video that that was the weakness of this Packers defense, and that is exactly what they scored on. Stone Smart not only caught it, but made the safety Jonathan Owens miss and ran all the way into the end zone. Later on in the game, he dropped a touchdown. That was a beauty by Justin Herbert, man. Austin Eckler, he had a nice third and one for 37 yards where he just boom, boom bounce it back towards the outside. Really good vision on display right there. But he was running down the field like he was a defensive lineman who was stuck in the middle of a nightmare. You know how you run in dreams? He also had a fumble inside the five yard line in the fourth quarter, bro. That would have changed the outcome of this game if they scored there. There's no doubt in my mind that Austin Eckler is still injured because how he has played since he came back and after seeing that, I don't know if he should be getting more touches than Joshua Kelly, at least in the run game. Now let's talk about Justin Herbert, bro. Justin Herbert looked great in this game. He has such great pocket presence and mobility in the pocket as well as out of the backfield. And he can make guys miss, man. He's a sneaky Lamar Jackson kind of, uh, you know what I'm saying? And on top of that, he is pinpoint accurate at times. And in this game, it was one of those times. He was so, so accurate this entire game. On the first drive of the second half, Zion Johnson let Devontae Wyatt come right in Justin Herbert's face instantly off of a stunt move, and Herb calmly made a miss and ran 28 yards all the way into the red zone. And then in the fourth quarter, he led his team on a touchdown drive using his legs and throwing perfect passes in tight windows he was constantly using his legs and maneuvering the pocket really well which if he wasn't able to do that just imagine then imagine how awful this offense would have been this goes back to the inconsistency of this team man the offense either looks terrible or amazing and really the only time it looks amazing is when justin herbert just takes over the game but even when he does like we saw today where he played elite his receivers still need to catch the ball. And in this one, they just simply weren't doing it consistently. Even Keenan Allen wasn't. And that is not because Herbert is throwing the ball too hard. It's just on the pass catchers, man. And the sun was getting in their eyes on some of the catches and Quinton Johnston had a really rough game. That drop at the end of the game would have been a touchdown to win. And after Herbert did such an amazing job of evading pressure and getting rid of it to throw a great ball to him, man, you need to catch those. He also had a drop earlier in the fourth quarter on that. Uh, I think it may have even been on that same drive. He just didn't have a great game today. No excuses on that one. That is all on him. And, and you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, what is going on with Darius Davis? That is our other TCU receiver that we just drafted. He was getting good reps earlier in the season, but now he's like non-existent. What is it going to take for us to start doing end arounds again and quick slants with him? I mean, they're using Alex Erickson the same amount as him. 
Why? Now let's talk about the defense. Okay. The Packers were clearly attacking the Chargers linebackers with passes over the middle, screen passes, end arounds, and running back flats. Man, it looks like they saw what the Lions did, and they were just trying to replicate that on offense. They even called some of the same exact plays that the Lions did, and some of them worked while some of them didn't. The Chargers front seven was pretty inconsistent in the run game, but it seems like anything between the tackles, the Packers didn't have a lot of success there. But then on the end of rounds and anything on the outside of the tackles, it was way more effective. And part of the reason for that is because Joey Bosa left this game early with an injury. I hope he's not done for the season. But also behind Thule and Khalil Mack, we were literally playing Justin Hollins, who we signed this week because Chris Rumpf is on IR now, so we don't have anybody behind Thule and Khalil Mack. Thule Tui Pelotu looked good in run defense and had an awesome tackle for loss in the second half and was also good in pass rush in this game where he had a pass deflection and some pressures, but without Joey Bosa, the stunt move that they would run was not even called, so it took away a lot of that pass rush potential for this Chargers defense. What also takes away from the pass rush potential is when you drop Khalil Mack or Tuli Tui Pelotu back in coverage when those two are quite literally your only pass rushers left on this freaking roster. I don't care what the scheme is because you need to adapt it to the players that you have and put your players in position to succeed and everyone on this defense would be in a better position with your pass rushers rushing and not in coverage. So let's stop doing that. Alohi Gilman, though, continues to be the best freaking safety on this roster, even on a team with freaking Derwin James, bro. He comes downfield so fast and with a vengeance. He is a consistent open field tackler and reads and diagnoses what he sees so fast. Michael Davis, he got away with the pass interference on a deep Romeo Dobbs pass and then let up a pass to A.J. Dillon on third and eight, where neither him or Kenneth Murray seemed interested in guarding him coming out of the backfield. And that is a big problem for this defense. Those third and longs, it, we'll get into that late. There's another play on the Jaden Reed touchdown run where Michael Davis was running down the field and that Jaden Reed run was towards his side. Michael Davis did not even turn around and know that it was a run play until Jaden Reed was 30 yards downfield. I'm sorry, you have to have better awareness and a better sense of urgency than that. That is just really bad defense. Asante Samuel Jr., man, he has been consistently taking terrible angles to the ball carrier. And while he is pretty good in coverage, his inability to tackle is just a big detriment to this team. And it's time that we start talking about playing Jasir Taylor over him because of that. Jasir is one of the team's best tacklers and he comes downfield fast, similar to Alohi Gilman. So in my opinion, it's worth giving him more reps. But honestly, both of these guys play a lot on defense anyway, so I don't know if it would make a huge difference. If Staley decided to stop playing his defensive backs five to ten yards off on every single play, including the third and shorts, that would make a big difference. But that's not even the worst part of this defense. The middle of the field might as well be uncovered, bro, because there are so many times that Kenneth Murray and Eric Kendricks are absolutely nowhere to be found in coverage. What happens often is the offense uses a running back in the flat to take away one of the linebackers, use a tight end on an underneath route to take away the other one, or they force, they force both the linebackers to go between the hashes and the numbers closer to the sideline and leave the middle of the field absolutely vacant, empty, naked, susceptible, unoccupied, desolate, whatever you want to say, everything else that you can think of. And yes, we don't have great players on defense. We know that now, outside of Khalil Mack and Tuli Tui Pelotu, of course. But opposing teams have now been consistently taking advantage of this defense by game planning against Brandon Staley's game plan, not the players. On top of that, the guys just don't look inspired, man. Look at Derwin James and Kenneth Murray out there and tell me that they are playing with the usual fire that they do because it looks like they lost it. And no one outside of Khalil Mack and Tuli Tui Pelotu and Alohi Gilman, honestly, should be playing serious snaps on this team next year. And yes, that includes Derwin James, man. What has happened to him? Oh yeah, Brandon Staley happened. Here's everything that you need to know from this game. 
Justin Herbert is an elite quarterback no matter what you see in the stat sheet. And Keenan Allen is a very good wide receiver, but he did struggle today. This defense is worse than you think it is. And Brandon Staley, if he's not fired tomorrow, he's going to be fired at the end of the season. So thank you guys for watching. I mean, this was a rough, this was honestly probably the roughest game of the season because now that we've dropped to four and six, I'm just going to be flat out honest with you. I don't think this team is going to make the playoffs. I think it's going to be a real big struggle from here on out. Probably going to lose next week. Then we're going to drop to four and seven. Then you have to win five straight. We play the Chiefs and the Broncos twice and the Raiders. Those are all divisional matchups, which are going to be tough for us because we don't play divisional games lightly. This is uh, this has been a rough season, but if you've stuck around, thank you guys so much. I, I appreciate you guys watching. I'm going to keep making videos, obviously, but uh, it's a rough one.